This is the shack that I built for my wife back three years ago. And I was hunting with the wife on Wisconsin public, but that was hard to manage her because she really is a hunter. So uh, after I filled that tag, I didn't have another tag, buck tag from Michigan. So I built this shack for her, thinking, well, she'll come here and be able to hunt here. So we bought her a buck tag and she actually shot a buck. But uh, I built this shack in October. And she got a buck April, uh, November 28th, I think. 26th or 28th, it was late in the season. I've touched but, a dead uh, animal. <laughs> I hunted out of this last year. You know, maybe a half a dozen times or so, and I got some decent video. Real nice six-pointer I let go. And this year I hunted it in about 15 minutes. But I'm so used to this mobile deer hunting tree stand I have that I couldn't stand, stand it in here. I had to move. So now I'm hunting in here out of necessity because this snow is really wet. And if I hunt in this wet snow, I will get soaked. So even though I got a rain jacket on, everything gets soaked, right? So uh, there's fresh deer tracks in the snow. And when I came out here to check the feeder, see if it was working, I kicked one up. So I was probably sitting here waiting for the feeder to go off. But uh, the shack is made out of wood from a building that was torn down. It was built in 1850. This is the lighter oak planks. Real 2x10s. 2x8s I got out of it. When you put a ruler to it, it's really 2 inches and really 8 inches. The next two days I'm going to hunt on Michigan Public. With all the snow I should be able to see any fresh tracks. And I'm learning pretty much the area and if I see fresh tracks, especially where I've already scouted, I might have a good idea where the deer is. Alright, anything shows up, I'll let you know. Look at that cage. <laughs> and here are the two deer that we've harvested during the Michigan firearm season. Both are does. This is the one my wife got. This is the one I've got. Both shot over bait. Hanging pretty close to 20 days. I think it's 20. And this one is the 10th today, and this one was shot on the 16th. Here we go. I lift them all the way up onto this platform. And here we go. There's a blue jay convention going on right behind me. They could be yelling at it there because there's some clear cutting going on. Off in a distance here, a couple hundred yards. This is a pretty nice spot, I think, for even without that clear cutting going on. There's a creek that oxbows right here. side of the creek there's a little rise there's a pocket of tag elders here on the lower end and it goes up and I can see mature maples and hemlocks a couple cedars I can see quite a ways in that direction if I come around the other side of the tree I can get a shot as we come around here towards the South, west, there's a really nice long shooting lane there following the creek. I think it gets down just a little ways to like right there, then it bends out that way. But it gets more interesting as we come around here. I'm right on the edge of a thick band of cedars. I saw some balsam firs in there, a couple spruce. And I'm sitting in a little pocket of black ash. Great shooting over here. I followed a trail in it and I finally got off of it so I could clear it. But that trail's on the edge right there. The path that I came in on is over this direction right here. I could 
see a number of pressure tracks coming in from that direction coming in towards me here. But I came in way over here. And I jumped off the path as soon as I was able to clear the creek. Assuming anything's coming down that ridge there. Coming in and skirting this edge to get to the clear cut. I know they're cutting cedars over there. That's a favorite winter deer food. So I'm up here two sticks high. Let's see here. It's plenty high enough to get the shooting I want. I am muzzleloader hunting. It's a Remington 700 ML that I've abused over. said there was quite a bit of rust where I left the powder charge in for a whole season once. But he thinks it's good enough to fire yet. Just might affect my accuracy a little bit. Earlier when it, we didn't have light, the snow was so thick. I don't think you could see 20 feet. It's really some fine snow. It's probably wet. Look at it. Just clinging to that branch. There's like six inches of snow there on that one branch. Up here at camp. And I like to think that it's just me. And the wood burner. That's it. There's no other heat source. I have to haul on water. There's no water here. I have an outhouse in the back. It's me and the wood burner. I don't know what it is, but at home, you know, I get seven, eight hours of sleep pretty regularly. Sometimes I sleep a little bit longer, not very often. But here, I went to sleep last night at 6.30. I woke up once at 2.30 and I built another fire. So all that probably took a half an hour. Went back into bed and didn't wake up until a quarter after six. <laughs> that happens often here. I'm not sure why, but it's nice. It's nice. Right apart. We are all stacked up. I had to go out and get some clothes out of my truck, and you can see where I shoveled half of it off so the snow wouldn't fall into my seat when I opened the door. And there's at least 10 inches of snow on that truck. At least. And it's wet and heavy. And my makeshift porch roof here is holding up really nice. I got multiple layers of very thin plywood that I scavenged out of a trailer and we're tearing apart. And, uh, and I've got these cedar posts every two feet. It's under a pretty good load right now.
that's my baiting for today. You know, just getting less and less because I'm running out. We can bait until the end of deer hunting season, which is the January 2nd this year. Very deep snow. If I come over here, it's almost to the top of my boot. Right there. Look at the trees are bent over. This is my access road. You can see where the ruts are. The snow's a little bit shallower. And everything is drooping. Everything is bending over from the weight of the snow. You can see the sea berries are bending under the snow load. <laughs> Here's one that's very pronounced. I see one balsam fur over there, the top is bent over severely. The last time this happened, which was two years ago, a lot of those tops just broke right off. And I'm thinking that since it happened two years ago, anything that was weak broke then, and, won't, and so I won't have as many break now. A hint of orange in this white landscape. Those are sea berries. Still edible. This is the access road in and out of camp to the main road. <laughs> I already knocked some snow off of some of the branches. But uh, I don't have a chainsaw with me. I got a handsaw and I got a shovel, so I'm going to try to knock some of that snow off. See if they bend up a little bit, then I'll just plow through it. I got a guard on the front of the truck. I think it'll be all right. Look at that hay. I shoveled the middle of the drive out right here at the road because this is where it gets the thickest. And when I drive over it with my truck, I'll pack it down where the ruts are. And I'm preparing this so I can get in here with my car. Two years ago when this happened, that was the problem. Getting in here with my car, I had to shovel the whole thing in the middle, all the way to the cabin. So uh, I got most of all those tag elders up now. This cedar isn't gonna go up, it broke, it shattered. So I'm gonna have to get my hand saw. I don't have to saw it, get it out of the way. Of course, you know the prissies with their brand new trucks, they would never drive into this. All these branches scraping on their hood and their roof and their doors. But I wasn't uh, one of those guys that locked myself into a payment on a new truck so I can just do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bought it on eBay, it was pretty cheap. Came with a knife. And it's light, but I cut on the bottom first to relieve the leverage that's going to happen. So now I'm going to start cutting on the top, and once I cut it through, get close to this bottom cut, it'll just snap right off because of the weight of the overhanging part that I want to cut off to the top. But this cedar's going to die anyways because it's snapped. Ah, you never know. There might be some branches left on the bigger part and start growing straight up. <laughs> and I got this all shoveled in the past when I was eating all that corporate food I'd have to probably take 30 breaks to do that much now I actually stopped and rested maybe three times and then it's not long it's like two minutes and I want to keep going so all I did was shovel out of the middle because I got the ruts from driving on it and I've got all that snow packed that I'm going to pack once I drive the truck over it and I'll be able to get the little car in here easy enough I was supposed to be in the 40s next week, but because I'm in the forest here, I don't think it's going to melt. But uh, the next couple nights it'll freeze. It'll be packed, hard packed, and it'll freeze, and it'll be like, just like a hard road. So the problem with the car, you know, it's got that continuous four-wheel drive, so I can, I mean, it goes through a lot of stuff. But you can bottom out on it. And this is, I think some of the snow here in the middle was 15 inches, maybe even deeper. 
but it's wet and packy. Once I drive over the edges here with the truck, I think I'm good to go, unless we get another snowfall like this, which is possible. So right now I'm going to take out this. No! Gotta get a deep cut. There we go. It's nicer when you're in and you work out to the road. It's like, ooh, here I am, I made it. You can see it's a lot darker over there. That's where the lake is. Uh -oh. They ain't gonna wanna focus, probably because there's a bunch of water on the lens. I dropped it in the snow before. <laughs> but you can see it's really dark, so that's like lake effect uh, situation right there. Then we look off towards the west, and it's brightening up. Oh yeah, she's packed. Really nice. Yeah, we got this packed really nice now. It's six, eight inches deep here, and now it's even with the middle. Boy, I'll tell you, I got pretty lucky with that snowplow because <laughs> if uh, I, I'd have come back tonight and it got colder, that'd have been like chiseling ice. So, perfect timing. Let's see here. There. <laughs> so this looks pretty nice here. Yeah, I'll be able to get it out of here with my car now. That looks tough. That looks tough. Let's go to the next spot. Look at that, there's a bunch of trees down up here. Look at that. I think it's I think it's plugged up. I don't have a saw. Look at that. Just to get out of the way. We're going all the way back. <laughs> okay. Oh. We're being bombarded with snow. <laughs> the other place I go public hunting and we already got an obstruction and I'm just barely on the road here. Looks like somebody kind of drove through it, must went over the top of it, off to the, their vehicle. I could probably uh, cut the tip of that with my saw. What's beyond is the question. And here's the result of two snowfalls, 16 inches. Some spots is a lot worse. 
kind of those lower spots it probably is two feet deep I'm up here a little bit higher you see where my as I bring my truck here it push the snow out in front <laughs> lots of stuff's gonna be coming off camp It's already melted on the top, I can see it's thinner. But at the back here it's really thick. But there's really not much they can it can wreck as it drops right there, so let her go. Caught more mice last night. That mouse right there didn't know what hit it. Burns out. This is the feeder. And I built a New setup here. First of all, I put a trail camera in right there. You got to protect it from the snow and the rain by a couple of cedar shakes. And right there is the tree that I'm going to set up a stand on the portable one for bull hunting yet late this year. So I've got a shot right to the feeder, maybe 15 yards. I got a shot as the deer are coming through this little cut the same distance. You see there's the tree right in there. And what I'm really excited about is if the deer come in like I expect them to, if it's a south of wind, the wind is going to be cutting like right here. And because it's open over here, I think it's going to swirl around away from this trail here. So it'll be just off wind on a south wind. Southwest is no good. This is southwest. South will be alright. So this is the trail, and right there's a tree. Would that be exciting to get a shot at five yards, right here. I made that trail a couple of years ago. With all the snow knocking down all the cedar leaves and whatever, it's probably needs to be cleaned up again. So that'll be the setup. Today is the 12th, so like Christmas or after. Unless something drives me mad and I want to try it faster. <laughs> okay, you can see I have this cedar shake here propped up by a number of sticks. There's one right here. There's one right there. And there's one that's connected to the camera. Keeping the camera at an angle down towards the cedar. Now, that's solid. This one here isn't quite as solid, but it'll deflect. I think a lot of snow's gonna be coming down in the next couple days. So that's kind of like a deflector for now. That's it. And I got it right next to that tree so that this branch here swaying around might not trigger it. But with all the snow melted, it's gonna spring back up. So last day of muzzle order, that's why I'm carrying the the gun yet and then it's over for another year yeah no buck this year not yet so it goes until the second we still have three weeks we'll see what happens and look at what I found a deer bed so that was through the Snow of Saturday morning. And another one over here. This is my set for the last day of muzzle water season. I was just scouting, I gotta go back and get my clothes now. Or get warmer clothes. Because I'm just scouting, I was just I wasn't sure I was even going to set up, but I found a really nice trail right up here. So here's the trail right here. And it was done between noon yesterday and noon today, probably last night. But I got tracks going both ways. It's got a bigger print. See. Here we go. This is the last day of Michigan muzzleloader deer hunting. 
I'm set up on a trail I scouted earlier today, and there were no prints anywhere. We had a big, huge snowfall Friday night, Saturday morning, up until noon yesterday, Saturday, and there were no prints until I found, until I got to this little section. I've got a mature cedar thicket behind me, and I'm looking over a clear cut. And behind me, downwind to me a little, there's a single print going in to this clear cut. And then what I'm actually overlooking is a pretty good trail of deer going back and forth. And there's 16, 18 inches of snow. I'm thinking that they're going to follow their trail back in. So, I don't know, it's the best I got. So uh, we're going to settle in here. We have a, a more than an hour and a half until legal shooting light ends. And then that's it for the season. Then it's back to bow hunting. Should I decide? Should I choose to do it? That probably. Okay. This is what I'm looking at this way. I hunted more this year than I ever have any other prior year, maybe even doubled. And I'm using firewood more than normal. Although it's been warmer, so I'm using less firewood per day, but I'm using 
more firewood for the season because of the increase in hunting activity. And I'll show you this right here. Some old timer told me that if I cut the, or if I split, I got a mall here, I'm splitting these segments. If I split it from the top side down, it'll split easier. So you can see this one still has a branch and the branch is going up. That one's easier to identify that this is the top right here. <laughs> Thank you.